Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MBS Show. I am your coup leader and temporary host, Silver Quill. Here with me is planeswalker extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. Yo, yo, I heard this TikTok trend going on, and I'm going to try and do it. It's called the... Oh, um, it seems that that trend is not new anymore. Okay, is the... Uh, you, you know what, Silver? Uh, go move on to the next guy while I'll find a new trend. All right, and that next guy is Jakob von Tokar. Hey, everybody. Uh, hold on a second. I I just need to check. Oh, okay, never mind. I paused for a, se- for a second. Somebody misplaced my ears. Well, I'm sure we'll hear about it. So, yes, as you might be able to tell from the dialogue, we're dealing with an episode that features both uh, the theme of TikTok or as, uh, what do they call it, clip trap? Yep. And now uh, also the introduction of jazz. It's or, jazz, baby. Or technically a uh, second debut of jazz because she appeared in the episode five. Second debut, but speaking role this time. So we are here to talk about the episode Clip Trot, an episode in which uh, Pip is essentially trying to get in on the latest trend, and, but trying to get her friends to help her uh, accomplish this goal is like herding cats. And uh, oddly enough, we were talking about the Marvels just before starting the recording. If you want to hear that conversation, become a Patreon supporter. Mm-hmm. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Yes, yes. But... We're going to do things just a little bit different. Rather than asking for first impressions, we're going to tackle things in a in a broad way. And I don't just mean a TV a musical, because I promise you do not want to hear me sing. Uh, do take it first if uh, you need to ask for opinions, because my cat is doing stuff. Uh-oh. So we're, we are actually literally hurting a cat in real life off screen. Basically, this whole episode is one big social media trend and its pursuit. Apparently, the bunny, uh, the bunny, honey, honey, which is basically not bunicorns, but but just bunnies dancing. Very odd thing that uh, they don't have horns. So, Yaka, my first question to you: What do you think about the fact that they've introduced mutations? of uh, bunnies and rats. Now suddenly everything's either got wings or a horn. I mean, if it was just that they introduced rabbits with horns, they're jackalopes, aren't they? Ah, the jackalope, that's a... That's from a bygone age. Mm-hmm. My childhood, but you're right. But jackalopes have antlers, I believe. Yeah, basically. But for these other creatures, I, I honestly don't know what to make of them. I mean... Are they? Do they make them any more fantastical? If you just, I don't. I mean, this isn't Avatar: The Last Airbender, where you can just put two animals together and just be done with it. Possibly. I mean, no one's at least tried to say yip yip at us. What did I miss? Sorry. We're talking about the fact that G Five has felt the need to enhance animals because now we have bunny corns and pig rats. And I'm sure they'll slap wings or a horn on something else. I remember thinking, was there a radiation leak at some point to cause all these mutations? But, Roman, I'm curious, what do you think of all these strange creatures now inhabiting I, Equestria? I've always wondered why. Why is that reason? Because if we're living in the same... Sorry. <laughs> if we're living... <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. Um, if this is taking place in the same universe as G4... Why are the wildlife the way they are? I, and I'm not talking about uh, the mystical beasts, the hydra, the manticores, and so on. This is just your basic bunny. Like, why does a bunny have horns? And why does a doggy have wings? And I, I, I do get the joke where they're living in a unicorn community so having horns does make sense, but not really why. And living in a Pegasi community, you, you, you get a gist. So why? That's the thing that I'm asking myself, because why is this happening? That doesn't make sense. And like you mentioned before, Silver, radiation leak. That's the only explanation. <laughs> that's right. There was a terrible mutation that swept the land. Or somebody opened the uh, door in reality and the uh, toxic energy started to seep out into the 
new Equestria. What do you want to bet with Starlight Glimmer with one of her Starlight, experiments? Star- Starlight is at least plausible, but Discord. Why? Why not Discord? Blame Discord. Always blame Discord. Oh, we we could get a song going. Blame Discord. Blame Discord. I already did a song about blame Discord <laughs> yep. way back. Uh, way back in the day. In the day of G five, uh, G four, when we were nearing the end. There we go. I did forget to mention something. Why involving the matter of mutated animals that make no sense? Like, I know that the G4 at least had animals that were, or at least mythological creatures that existed. And the current ones, except for the jackalopes, don't make sense. But winged dogs, there is something about that. It's called Smurgle. It's basic... Hold on. Let me just... Smurgle. Basically, it's uh, in the Slavic god with uh, a dog with uh, with wings. Oh, okay, okay. I was looking for... I was did, definitely did barking up the wrong tree, pun intended. No, I got a definition from Urban Dictionary. A singularly feline display of affection. So I was I, way I got off. the um, Pokemon that has a brush for a tail. You know that one? I, I, I guess people, people find it. It's spelled S-M-E-A-R-G-L-E. Uh, what Jacob says is S I M A R G L, way off. But either way, that'd be funny if it turned out that Cloudpuff was actually a god hiding amongst the royals. It's like, how long have you had that dog? Oh well, I got it from my mother, and she got it from her mother, and oh my god, I've got an immortal pet. You know what? I just came up with a, a new headcanon confirmed. <laughs> oh god, wait, uh, I, I I'm having this deja vu where a uh, dog dies parent gets new dog that's similar to the old dog no uh that sounds more like a messed up childhood i forgot where's that from but yeah anyway um what else well basically we were just talking about the animals but now it's time to talk about the ponies which are also animals but they're talking animals that makes them a silly cuter basically uh pip is all hot to trot about this new bunny any dance. So she wants all her friends to do it so she can post it on Click Trot, which uh, I think it was Jakob who commented that's like their version of TikTok. And the end, resu- the end result is high in frustration for none of them are dancing the way that they're supposed to. And Pip is getting upset, so upset. Which brings us to the, to another point of discussion. Pip's character and this emphasis on social media. I'm curious to know what either of you think about this. Yeah, that's probably the one thing that's kind of putting me off when the character social media oriented. I mean, they're basically uh, trend chasers, if anything. That's true. But at the same time, too, when you think about getting along, not, not getting along, but when you, when you think about Getting, not getting, but uh, involving the kids, just following the, tr- not really trend, but just what the kids are into right now. Uh, social media is one of them. And previously it was the internet, and now it's social media and so on. So this is kind of following what the kids are into nowadays, which kind of makes sense. So that's how they are relating to it yes that's what i'm looking for relating to the kids hello fellow kids silver Hmm? silver do you ever get the feeling that we've basically become the boomers of our generation well i I am but i'm older than both of you so you know hush up you youngins i'm not sure i'm not 100 sure about jacob but me and you silver we live through all five playstations that's right, the great brutal wars of the PlayStations and yep. all their comings and goings. But I remember the days of the original Nintendo. My mother would would hum the Super Mario theme for I played it ad nauseum. Those were good times in the, the original Nintendo. For, for me personally, it was the Super Nintendo Bomberman series. Me and my brother would play a lot of that. Oh man. Oh, get, get on back topic. Get on back on topic. Why are you telling me that? You're the one going on about it. But actually, let's let us talk about this topic of social media. Used to be, social media was just sort of a joke in the midst of an episode. I mean, 
you think of like Alucard, <laughs> hang on, I need to tweet about this. But then to move a little bit forward, you have uh, characters like, uh, I believe her name is, no, no, this is in the Spider-Man, uh, the first PlayStation games. So they were still bringing it back to PlayStation. Oh, yeah, Screwball, the social media person, person thingy, bad guy, yeah. Well, she was obnoxious. I hated her levels. As did I. But the but the thing I want to talk about is that we now have social media being a motivator for stories. This is all based on wanting to do a TikTok video and get the views, get the uh, celebration. As we talk about as sort of boomers or quasi-boomers, I'm a geriatric millennial, apparently. How do you feel about this, that suddenly... We've gone from just making it a quick reference to this is the focus of episodes. I'm in between. I hate it, but at the same time, too, I understand why they are using it. And it's relatable. It's what people know. It's basically the floppy disk. I guess all three of us know what a floppy disk is. But if you showed a kid who was born in the early 2000s, They'll say it, oh, that's the safe icon, and that hurts. But it is kind of funny that things from long ago become a different sort of symbol. But that, that is interesting. What about you, Jakob? Well, uh, I don't know how to put it. Like, I sort of put out by, uh, by uh, this type of characters because, well, they're basically chasing their uh, 15 minutes of fame, although consider- considering it's... Uh, TikTok reference, it's basically like a few seconds long. So, yeah, I don't know. I just don't like the whole uh, social media, especially influencers. But but at the same time, too, how do you make things relatable for the newer generations? Because back in our days, it's all about the video games. And uh, people will... Uh, relate video games to us to get our attention. Nowadays, it's the youngins who companies need to get their attention, or storytellers need to get their attention. And using social media is something relatable. Yeah, but you also have to put in uh, rem- uh, remember that uh, somebody had to start this, and it's not necessarily the uh, the target audience that started it. It's more likely that it was somebody who was uh, way ahead of everybody and decided, you know what, let's just try this for a joke, and all of a sudden it's stuck. And so now it's basically the young people thing. We're all trying to be like, sup, young person? Like you, I drink my yogurt from it too. Uh, basically. <laughs> oh, this am. Kind of miss having Safi here to react to our old man oh, no. Yabonics. She couldn't get wiggy with it, yo. But either which way. So Pip tries very, very hard to get her friends to follow the dance, but each one does their own thing. And as such, she gets frustrated, goes off on a huff, and eventually tries doing it on her own, only to get feedback from both Jazz Hooves and uh, Posey. Oh, it's Posey Bloom, apparently. Now, Jakob, you wanted to talk about uh, Jazz. She... Of the appearing, disappearing years. Yeah, because uh, if I recall some time ago on Equestria Day, there was this, uh, well, explanation from the developers why she doesn't have them, and apparently, hold on, let me just, uh, I'm just gonna give a quick rundown while I try to find it, but basically, the uh, from the original concept art, the her ears were supposed to cover majority of her ears, but they apparently couldn't get uh, that to work. Uh, Okay, here it is. Her design was to be a bit more voluminous, implying her ears were covered up. Yeah, that's what it's basically showing in the Tell Your Tale. But apparently they couldn't get that to work in the 3D because... reasons? Well, 3D can be difficult. Yeah, but then you also take into account that there's, uh, I don't know, there's a whole lot of people out there on Twitter and other places that are basically uh, doing uh, 3D animations for pittance compared to what uh, this, mo- uh, this uh, I don't know, what was it, this uh, anime, uh, 
animation studio that's being uh, paid by Disney. Uh, I mean, uh, Hasbro. <laughs> to be honest, on a scale as large as this, you'll get certain situations where you have some model here that's being done and you try to put on the ear, the whole thing doesn't work. Like something about the ears will destroy the whole show or the whole episode. So by removing the ear, it somehow works. No matter how much you try, to... <laughs> yes. or at least you and hope no it does. how much you try to fix it, it just doesn't want it to happen. And I'm guessing this is one of those situations. Yeah, but considering how how uh, well it's uh, Maker Mark is not exactly the most detailed uh, animated 3D show on the planet, and I've seen uh, artists working with the animation doing far more complex. Uh, things with uh, 3D models. So, I, I'm sorry to say this, but this just comes off as they they were too lazy to make it um, to make it work. Or someone on the executive board said, hey, I like her without ears. Take them away. So I find it kind of hilarious that we're talking about uh, Jazz was supposed to have more voluminous hair or mane, and she's standing next to uh, Posey and Posey, uh, for those who have seen Make Your Mark and Tell Your Tale, she has far more of a mane in Tell Your Tale than she does Make Your Mark. So much so, I thought she was balding in the in the 3D version. Oh my. <laughs> so there's a bit of humor there. By the looks of the 2D animation, Jazz here... Uh, how do I put this? Jazz has the Kim Possible hair. One side of her hair has a lot of volume, while the other is... doesn't. And Jazz reminds me of her. Well, that's probably a good thing. I mean, people like uh, the Kim Possible cartoon. But this is also an, an early indication of Jazz's character as, well, she's very hesitant to say anything to about how, well, Posey puts it more bluntly, that this is so last week. Literally. And basically, Jazz is very hesitant to criticize or bring anything up against Pip. That may have something to do with the fact that she's her employer or that she's from another, uh, or that she's royalty. But Jazz has a hard time speaking up, and we'll see some of that when we get to uh, the Make Your Mark series, specifically a, a rendition on The Emperor Has No Clothes. Of course, ponies are naked all the time, so I don't know why anyone would have a trouble there. The belt counts as uh, clothes wear, I, I guess. I, I'll say this. Ponies Maybe. with socks is, pro is suggestive. Wait, why? Yeah, they're wearing more clothing than normal. <laughs> know, Isn't that actually right. conservative? Uh, Probably because they're uh, putting in the center uh, the part that's yeah, not clothes. It's just socks. How bad is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, can you imagine the people who lost it when, uh, in that episode where uh, Apple Jack, when she went into the song to look for Apple Bloom to serve for the Hadra and she wore uh, boots? Actually, I remember more than a few commentators, ooh, Apple Jack looks hot in boots. Like, <laughs> Guys, I she's fighting a monster. I'm going to hold my tongue. I'm going to hold my tongue. Is this like a Red Sonia situation? Nice chainmail bikini, nice uh, fireproof boots. I don't know. Silver, stop it. It's just barely the middle of triple <laughs> oh, and Don't well, I'm just going to hold my tongue. Oh, are you sure, Jakob, to talk about, oh, the heat causing her to sweat and glisten <laughs> in the firelight? Did it seem like that happened, Silver? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. See so, yeah. ya. I'm trying to uh, break it, break everyone now. <laughs> you will be broken. Or Jakob's going to have like a beard by the end of this month that's down to his ankles. I mean, it's going to help. <laughs> but anyway, uh, what I thought was a pretty funny joke that when Posey asks, have you been living under a cave or living in a cave? And of course, they actually were. Taking shelter. Taking shelter in the rain on what sounds like a cappy trip. Either which way, Hitch was apparently trying to be the guide, and that didn't work out so great. But this is... Okay, last time we talked about Posey's silent role. 
in uh, Tell Your Tale, just as she gave a sort of meh review of a main melody. Now we get her laughing at Pip, especially when that's so last week. Have you been living in a cave? And I'm so I'm curious, what are your thoughts on Rosie Bloom? Yes, I, I forget her last name is Bloom, apparently. Is she related to Apple Bloom? Gasp. I, I don't know. Posey here, uh, with, with, with what we got of her, right? It seems like she is the atypical mean girl, but not enough to say that, ah, I don't, I dislike this character. This character is a bad name here. But no, nah, it, it feels like she's brutally honest. Jakob, how about yourself? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, as it was established earlier, the jazz is not the, too keen on speaking out against her uh, employer. But at least the uh, pose is being direct, even if she is sort of in a... Uh, uh, you're so lame type of, type of tone. But something that does bring it down for me in this episode is basically that... Well, we don't we don't have any context on what's happened, and we needed the flashback to see that the whole problem was that uh, Pip didn't know uh, that this fat basically passed uh, happened a week ago, and nobody's trying to do anything with it now anymore. I think it would have been a lot better if there was an episode before that where they basically uh, where. It, it shows the events play out, and then it just flashbacks to that uh, episode. You're saying you want more continuity? Oh, no. Yes. Yes. There we go. <laughs> I'll convert him yet. I'm just noticing Posey's occupation here, and it's an art museum curator. And I just have to think, does a personality like that work, work with the art museum creator thing. I'm, I'm just trying to think, does it? Well, I mean, that assumes that art cur uh, art curators or uh, people who run productions all have the exact same personality. So sometimes we, you, you can tell a person by their personality with their job. It, it's, it's like peanut butter and jelly kind of deal where if the person is more outgoing, honest and whatnot, you can see that reflect in their job. And as for for jazz, it's stated here, uh, mean melody stylist, social media influencer. Yeah, I, I guess. But also reading into this, right? Why didn't she just straight out tell uh, Pip that um, in a nice way that, hey, um, boss, the, the trend here is last week's thing. But here what we get is kind of brutally honest with what Posey says. Well, I'm going to put forth an idea <clears throat> for why she is pr uh, presenting this idea in so hostile a manner. Because right now she can deflect blame or laughter towards Pip. Back in uh, Main Melody or the introduction thereof, we just talked about it already. I'm forgetting the name of the episode. Welcome to Main Melody. Posey was willing to try a new hairstyle, main style, but was afraid to be seen in it. And she, and then we learn later on that she is uh, the cu the curator of an art pe uh, art gallery. I think she likes to express herself, but is terribly afraid of being mocked. So if there's an opportunity for her to say, shift the, the laughter or put some blame on other people, she won't get laughed at. In essence, she's, she's constantly doing preemptive strikes to make others feel, uh, to make others the target of ridicule because she's afraid she will be that target. This is just your headcanon theory? No, it's, uh, well, I don't know about if I qualify it as headcanon, but mostly what I've observed of her personality and actions over the course of the show. She's very big on trying to get the, everyone to point and laugh at someone else. But if she has to take the risk, she's terrified. 
And I find that an interesting concept. On a character's stance, standpoint? Yeah, that is very fascinating. But either which way, uh, Pip now realizes that she needs to... She can't just mooch, for a better lack of a better term, on this old meme. She's got to make a new one. So she has a revelation, re-edits the, uh, her friend's dancing, and it becomes the new hot trend. And, and it's a huge success. And if you notice, right, the pony with her was Jazz. You don't see Posey anywhere in that scene. So, yeah, I guess what you said is true. Yeah, she she wasn't willing to stick around to see, to be a part of a new experiment. She needs to be... Hmm, she needs to know it's safe. It's dangerous to go ahead. It's dangerous ahead. Take this. Which is also true because in the next scene, we do see her giving a like to the video. From the safety of her phone. But we also, I believe, get to have Rocky, uh, the other member of Main Melody, uh, just, yeah, Rocky Riff. Rocky Riff, we're getting new characters here. Yeah, actually, this was this is quite the viewing. It seems social media is at least a way to introduce a whole bunch of characters all at once. Uh, Rocky is the male pony with the Pegasi wings with the guitar pendant. And who looks almost exactly like Hitch. <laughs> that, that is one of those sad things where Almost all of the ponies look like one of the other ponies. Yeah, but at least in Tell Your Tale, they you, they actually look sort of different than compared to what uh, the art did in G4. Yeah. I mean, it works. <laughs> and we at long last get the lesson from Pip. Oh, you should just be yourself and do what you want to do. Don't follow the trend. So on and so forth. And yada and yada. Oh, also we get the Pip squeaks. I'd have to go back and figure out where their first appearance took place. Movie? Maybe. I don't think they were I don't think they were the trio at the end. Could be the second movie? Second movie? Yeah, that TV special. The holiday special. Uh the first special of uh, Make Your Mark. Yeah, that one. Could be? I don't remember. Oh, but for, forgot to mention horned raccoons. That's the thing. Oh yeah, raccoonicorns. Yep, we're back. We're back to the uh, radiation leak or possible gods in Equestria. I'm gonna have to. How does one pronounce this again, Jakob? Sim Simargal. Smargal, yeah. Smargal. Hmm. Silver. I just have to say, looking at the scene, those raccoons no magic. Could you just imagine them opening trash cans? God dang it! I imagine Equestria had to invest in locked trash cans, but. Uh, Either which way, we get the lesson, everyone has a good laugh because Izzy's still being a kook. And, well, what do you think of the moral? Don't follow the trend, just be yourself. And you could be the trend. Uh, who are you going to go first, Silver? Well, I'm, I'm the one asking the question, so I want to hear. Jakob, you go first. Your thoughts on the moral. Yeah, I'm fine with the moral, honestly. But there is something we didn't talk about because it's sort of subtle. Uh, do you do you remember when the first episode that we reviewed for Telltale when we, it was established that well, uh, Zip is like uh, I don't know how to put it. He's she's all, always trying to avoid to get, having her picture taken, and yes. here, yeah, and here in the recording, we see her do the uh, do the jam. So, I, I don't know if this is a character inconsistency or uh, am I missing something? Well, that's the thing. I mean, uh, there's an interesting question. What What is the difference between a character inconsistency and a developing a character? I mean, we haven't seen any other episodes, so I don't know if she still has the photophobia or whatever. In my opinion, I feel like Zip is just trying to help out her sister in just doing something that she enjoys. And since it's not her alone, uh, she kind of can accept the fact that, oh, I'll be on camera doing something, but it's doing something I like, which is going to be dancing and spinning around and stuff. And I don't have to pretend to be something that I'm not. So I, I, I'll just do a, do a little jam, get jiggy with it, and things will be done and I can pass it off to whoever's coming next on my turn. Maybe it's uh, easy. Yeah. No. Um, 
easy. Yeah, it'll be easy. Yeah, she she can do her thing. So I'm just guessing that if it's a group event thingy, she'll be more comfortable. But if a one on one thing where she needs to pose and be dolled up for it, she'll probably be feeling awkward about it. Yeah, I think that's consistent. She does like to take part in fun things, and parkour and dancing, I imagine, have some similar appeals. This this reminds me of the Rainbow Dash episode where, oh, uh, I'm not a girly girl. Oh, no, I like pedicures. Yeah, but they also get uh, a shot from, what's it, what is it, Zephyr Heights, and we see Queen Heaven, and she's practically gleaming. See, uh, her... is, it, is that the word, gleaming? Yes. I, I think yeah. that's appropriate. Her eyes are gleaming, seeing uh, her daughter Zip, uh, <laughs> yeah, dancing on the big screen. I mean, she's the exception to the rules. But also, I noticed another uh, how do I put it error. Oh, hold on, let me just link this to you. What? 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 Uh-huh. what, what? Do you notice something? Let's take a gander here. Po-po-po. Oh no, Elecorn. No. Yeah. Ah, uh, they're they're slowly ma- re- reintroducing themselves into Equestria. It's the secret invasion of Alicorns. Ah, uh, it's, it's it's the usual. At least we didn't get a Cyclops pony. Yeah. So Cyclops pony. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, that was at the start of uh, G four. Yep, season one. I think I missed that one. Was it episode twenty six, Silver? I don't remember. Yes, it is. The silver uh, is the ending because um, Rarity was flaunting her mane, asking the boys to pull a carriage for them. Yep, that's best night ever. Yep, dude's turning his head. He became a cyclops for a minute. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but we haven't had a we haven't had a beloved muffin mare reference. yet. Oh, oh, honest question to you all. How do you feel if Muffin comes back? Well, coming back, that would be a bit weird. It'd be like, are you an immortal too? But having a descendant, sure. At least reference, but still. I, hmm, to be honest, I, I want her to be special and not come to G5. But at the same time too, if she does, she'll be even more awesome. And the way to make her even more special is to have both QED marks on... Uh, both flanks. Uh, you know, I feel like I feel like they did that to make it easier on the toy manufacturers. Oh, yeah, that's true. You you can still do that, but for Muffin in the show, you do it on both ends to make her like, wait, what? What is oh. she for the oh, fans? <laughs> for the fans, uh, for, for an insane person yeah. like me, at least. I don't know, Norman. I think you're trying to uh, you're trying to sabotage Jakob here. You're talking about c- coming on the show, uh, both ends. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, all all manner of different uh, implications. <laughs> so let's talk more about stockings and Applejack. Her muscles taut as she leaves through the flames. The fire's glistening off her her wetted coat. How you doing, Jakob? Oh, he's. I'm sorry, he's I just tra- got back. <laughs> he's he's just something? tried. Wow. Yes, so sweet temptation, and the sheer Freudian nature of Norman's ideas. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm speechless. Yeah, there we go. Then, then my my work is complete. I've left Norman flabbergasted. Wrong. Oh, wrong podcast. That's all I have to say. Well, this is what happens when I ho- hold a hosting coup. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> but going back to the moral of be yourself, I actually want to quote uh, Thomas Jefferson, mm-hmm. who said, in matters of style, swim with the current. In matters of principle, stand like a rock. So, I don't know, following a trend isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're just, you know, going along with the fun. It's when... It, it starts to challenge your beliefs or principles that you have to perhaps say, no, I'm putting a stop to this immediately. That's profound. Like, I haven't heard of that one before. Ooh, it's a good one. And the truth is there's been a lot of TikTok trends that are not just stupid, they are life-threatening or destructive. And I doubt Pip will ever 
explore that idea unless they come up with some silly way to phrase it. But it's not, I guess that's the one thing that they can't explore with her role, which is unfortunate because if you're going to commit to this social media mindset, you really need to send the message to kids, this is not okay. This part, or this aspect is actually quite dangerous. That is true. And I, I'm just guessing that all three of us doesn't don't have a TikTok account or access to TikTok or want to access TikTok. Nope, I don't have a TikTok account. See, Mostly, isn't it run by China? Eh, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't even care because I don't use it. From what I heard, yes, but for the States, it's owned by the United States? I don't know. But to, to be honest, like, uh, uh, most of what TikTok is spills over to other medium, YouTube and also Instagram. So probably I'll see some of it there. But yes, uh, trends. Like, I, I don't think we're on TikTok to notice trends. And from what I understand, it's also the algorithm of how what, what you're watching because what you're watching is not always going to be what's popular in your circle. Probably if you watch a lot of um, car videos, you're going to get more car stuff. That's how the algorithm works. Well, all I know is on YouTube, if I watch one conservative talk video, suddenly I get 20 more. And I'm like, no, no, you misunderstand me. I mean, you could always create another account just for that. No, I just have to go into my hit history and delete but that's what the I, viewing. Th that's why I do on a regular basis, Silver. And if it pops up, I just right-click on it or just click the triple dot and say, I'm not interested. Well, either which way, I'd, I'd prefer that the thing not try to monitor me. <laughs> but it, 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 it's a question of too because if you have interest in this, they want to cater to your interests. But I, I understand you, you, you don't want to be spied on. Exactly. I've got my government for that. Uh, but we haven't asked you what do you think, Silver? Or did you already answer? About uh, trends and the TikTok thing? I, I think I've said my piece. Really, I think we're at the point of just overall thoughts or did I miss anything? So, Norman, you first. I'm, I'm just trying to remember. Uh, I, I don't think we miss much of the key important parts. Uh, we talk about uh, mutated animals. We talk about being stranded. We talk about uh, the ponies. So I, I think we covered most of it. And I guess going to final thoughts. So for my final thoughts, sorry, I, I forgot to mention we also see the old grey pony. What was his name? Man, I forgot his name. Old grey pony? Unicorn from... Oh, Alphabetal. Yeah, Alphabetal. Yeah, we, we also see him. So that's cool. Uh, I'm guessing there's history with him later on with the Queen or fanfics written about them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, you, you can imagine a steamy affair between single parents. Oh, no. Oh, mm, yes. Now, uh, he's probably the only stallion who can get the crown off that Queen, if you know what I mean. Uh... <laughs> Jakob, how you feeling? But I'm sure Norman is gonna be in the same position soon. Oh, I was like, like Norman, can I? I wonder if I can find some steamy music to play over all this. <clears throat> oh well, um, um, probably later on. Um, uh, oh no, moving on. But yes, um, as for the um show, uh, what was I saying? Yes, I I do like the lesson. I I like the lesson here that. Uh, you, you don't have to follow the trends. Instead, be a trend maker or do your own thing. Uh, enjoy what you're doing and be yourself. It, it doesn't really state be yourself. It doesn't state be yourself because I'm really forgetting this one. Actually, they were very specific on this. Oh, yeah. Be yourself. Yeah, there, there is that one. Yeah. So I, I do like that lesson. Yeah, just be yourselves. She literally says it. So I, I do like that because... <laughs> Here's the thing. Everybody who is anybody that's doing something in this industry is doing something they enjoy. And people who watch them also enjoy the content and follow them because hey, I also enjoy what you're doing and you're talk and, and you're saying stuff that I agree with. 
So let me follow you and let me support you. So with that, I, I feel like that's a good lesson to learn and carry on. So yeah, that, that, those are my thoughts. And Jakob, what about your thoughts on this episode? Uh, it was good, but as I said, the flashback bit sort of brought it down a bit for me, considering we could have had another episode that would then reference this one. Instead of being sort of in the dark, why the... Why uh, all the other of the... <clears throat> sorry. Uh, why all the other members of main five are sort of like nothing to know what this new fad is that uh, Pip is trying to get them to do. I could just say it's just interest. Like if the ponies, like the the other main, the the other four don't really browse TikTok or whatever. They they wouldn't know at all. Like yep. <laughs> like if you were to ask me what's the latest trend on the TikToks right now. I couldn't give you an answer at all. Yeah, but that's because we don't have t- TikTok, Norman. That's the point. But in this universe, everybody's using TikTok. I mean, what was it? Cloptra? So, I forget what it's called. We'll, we'll just call it TokTik. Yes, we'll just call it TokTik. But no, the... the, 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 the <laughs> sorry. Actually, I believe it's called Cloptra. Cloptra, yeah. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, like, we're... When we when we introduce to everybody liking, uh, you say everybody has it, but I don't think everybody has it. I, I, even I Alpha Beetle uh, has huge. it, and he's a unicorn. Unicorns didn't even have any technology by uh, the time of the movie. That's the mind-boggling thing about this. Well, I should correct myself. It's it's Clip Trot, not Clop Trot. Is something? I guess that's the After Dark or Dark Web. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, here we go, here we go. <clears throat> Welcome to Clop Trot, where we talk about all the five mayors and stallions here in Equestria. Have you heard about the news romance between uh, Alpha Biddle and Queen Haven? Oh, yeah. You know love is love, and even elderly love, oh, baby. <laughs> This one goes out to Norman Sanzo because I think he's about to lose the the triple N November challenge. Uh, <laughs> you do know that it's night time for me, right? So this is perfect for me while this is morning for you. What the hell? Oh, love is love at any time, baby. In the morning, <laughs> no. in the evening, you can get your funk on. <laughs> I'm so confused. Help! <laughs> <laughs> so now we've broken Norman. Mission accomplished. Ah, crap. I, f- uh, but, but, I forgot this guy doesn't have the applause button. He just said that. Ah! That's- Yay. Oh, that just sounds like a pittance. Well, either which way. So, yeah, other than that, uh, for what it was, the episode was fine. But it's just that bit that's sort of eh. And as for me, I eh, I had fun. It's it's just a quick passing thing. It's not a terribly deep episode. I think I would enjoy Pip's obsessions more if they explored both the good and the bad of social media. But right now, I fear they're not they aren't willing to commit to that. Talking about bads, right? Did we ever had anything bad? happen in G4 like some something like almost to an obsession kind of deal well let's see. there was rarity's uh, inspiration manifestation I mean but what do you mean by bad like, like you say you wanted uh, them to explore like the good and the bad uh, with Pip's thing right so I'm just trying to remember if there's anything like that happening in G4 where oh uh, doing this is good, but later on, if you do it too much of it, it's bad. Some can, something like that. I think there is one in the comic, the one that's about. There, and there's this old mayor that comes to uh, to town and basically starts protesting against selling sweets, and then the whole town devolves in the yes and the nos, and then Applejack starts to speak easy. Yes, I remember that. Okay, that one. That one is a good example. Um, I'm also thinking of uh, what you call this uh, the episode where 
Rarity gets too much into the self-help books. The what? Self-help? Uh, self-help, yeah. Where she listens... Where, where she gets assertive, but becomes too assertive. Oh, you mean Fluttershy. Yeah, with the uh, iron will. Putting your hooves up. Putting your hooves up. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, totally different character. <laughs> yeah, it's totally different. But, but still, uh, it's too much of a good thing done... That's right. A good thing turned bad. So, yeah, they, they did it in G4. So, I, I think they can do it in G5. Ah, but... Yeah, but... Will they? We got one slight problem with this one, because, well... Five minutes. Also true. Well, you can do a lot in five minutes. It's surprising, in fact. It's shocking. I, I guess you can get straight to the point, then. Yeah, I mean, with five minutes, you, you can't dilly-dally or linger. No dilly-dallying. So... So we shan't dilly dally. We, I think it's a good time to wrap things up. All right, I'll take it from here on silver, if you don't mind. Go ahead. All right. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmsurgmail dot com. You can also reach us on the twitters. The show's Twitter account is at dmbs show, and my personal Twitter account is at norman sanso silver. Where can the good people find you and your eccentric background music? Oh baby, wherever there's love, you'll find me there. No, you can you find Cass can check me out on Twitter, TV now, and YouTube under MLB Silver Quill. You can also find links to my Patreon and Kofi and spread the love with a little cash. Oh yeah, keep those bills coming in. But not the charge you bills, no the dollars. And if you want an OnlyFans account, well, I have to ask, what the hell is wrong with you, baby? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's plausible. I, 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 I don't know. <coughs> oh, my ribs. Ouch. <laughs> Jacob, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Tolkar, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. And unfortunately, I do not have background music on my end, so you're gonna have to do with it. It is okay. People can use their imagination. It's like reading a page on a book. Yay. Oh yeah, baby, you can use your imagination all you like, but let's just agree, keep those hands above the keyboard. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Silver, if they stand up... <laughs> stand up? No, I mean... uh, anyway... <laughs> Ribs. Uh, also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. Links are in the show notes below. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about it, thank yous. Oh, thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also myself. Like, thank you so much. See all you are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I'm Jakob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya. Good night, baby. And I'm gonna show myself out. <laughs> you know, if we have an After Dark show, this would be totally the background music for it. Well, it's from the YouTube Music Library, so we're not violating any copyright. Yay, oh no, does this mean we're going to do it? No, 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 I, I didn't agree to this. <laughs> That's right, this is titled The Kiss for Amanda. I have no idea who Amanda is, but <laughs> she's of all the kisses. Yeah.